tutorial is actually about this here how to blur backgrounds on portraits now you might be asking me why I'm making a tutorial about something that there's already a tutorial that I'm about to point you to um, but I'm going to explain that very quickly um, the effect that we're describing here if I just show you some examples um, if you see this picture here that I took while I was away um, in this picture we've got a flower is basically um, our portrait but it stands out because the background of the image is um, quite blurry and out of focus and the way I've achieved that effect is actually by taking the photo on a macro setting so it just focuses in on that image of the flower whereas everything else then goes out of focus um, I did something similar with this picture of a snail that I saw um, the snail and the foreground is in uh, normal sharp focus but the background here has become quite blurry and quite out of focus um, now the way I did this um, was simply by taking the photo using um, particular settings on my camera um, and it's not a particularly good camera it's just a very cheap Olympus um, FE100 it's just um, a normal automatic digital camera it's not a, a digital SLR or anything like that but it's important to point out that the way I got these shots was through um, photography rather than anything else this wasn't done in Photoshop or GIMP however I've been asked how to blur the background of a photo if you haven't got a SLR camera or a digital SLR camera um, and you don't know how to do that um, within GIMP or if you can't do it with the camera that you have um, so I'm going to put a link to this tutorial on how to do it if you do have a digital SLR camera um, and then you can learn how to do that manually but if you've already taken the photo and you would like to achieve the same effect then I'm going to show you how to do it using the GIMP so I'm just going to close this down for the moment so the sort of effect we're going for then is this um, blurry background with the main image in focus so let's just close down these and I'll get an image of that kind of thing well, what we got here, that'll do okay so here we've got an image of myself um, this time there was no manipulation with the um, focus settings on my camera um, it is a tiny little bit blurry because my camera realised I was taking a portrait so it's tried to automatically adjust it but really there's no difference between the focus I mean it as handsome as I am I don't really stand out there so to blur the background what we're going to need to do first is use our intelligent scissors and we're going to select the subject of the picture so in this case we're going to select me um, now I've already done a tutorial on how to use intelligent scissors so if you're not quite clear on what I'm doing right now I suggest you pause this video open a new window in hopefully Opera or Firefox depending on what you're using and see how to do this and I'm just going to pause this while I select the rest of me okay there we are um, I've selected the whole thing with the intelligent scissors then I clicked in the middle and now we have what we call the marching ants to show my selection um, I'm just very quickly going to check my selection because there are a few bits around here I don't know if you can see that if I just zoom in for you oh excuse me but just quickly zoom in um, now there are little bits here where I've missed parts of the hair now what I'm going to do this is a nice little trick because the intelligent scissors aren't always that accurate and this is a little trick I picked up from one of um, Encelic's tutorials on selection tools if we now click um, quick mask which is this little square down here um, we can see a red area that shows areas that haven't been selected and anything that's just a normal image has been selected and we can actually paint over certain areas to um, change that so if I just change my paintbrush tool by pressing P uh, a nice handy little shortcut key there and make my brush a little bit bigger by pressing the square bracket and you'll notice I'm currently set to black if I paint over any of this in black it becomes red because that's just putting a quick mask over it um, so I'm going to control Z that if I toggle it to white and do the same thing over here then that gets rid of it 
and I'll just get rid of that with Control Z. So all I'm going to do with this at the moment is just colour in a few of those extra bits that I don't want, just to get a more precise um, selection. And this isn't actually a selection at the moment, it is just a quick mask, but it's very easy to reconvert that back into uh, back into a quick mask. Um, I should also say another little shortcut key I'm using. In order to toggle between these two very quickly, um, you can just press X and it will, um, without clicking on that, if you just press X, um, that changes quite quickly. So when you're doing something with mask layers, it's very quick to just um, do it that way. And I just find that particularly useful myself, so there's a little tip for you if you like that kind of thing. Um, I'm not going to do this very well because this is just a tutorial, but you get the idea. So if I just, uh, oh, wrong one. If I just go over the bits that I want, um, that'll do for our purposes right now. And then to just turn it back into a selection, we just hit the toggle quick mask again and we've got our selection. Now I should point out that at the moment I've selected me. Everything in this selection, everything that was clear on the quick mask has been selected. What I want to do is invert the selection. Now there are two ways of doing that. You can very simply go to um, select and invert or you'll notice you can also just press the, the uh, shortcut keys control and I. So we're just going to click invert. Um, if I show you the quick mask now that's just basically turned it around the other way. This means that when I hit that, everything outside of the original selection I made has now been selected. Um, and the rest of this tutorial is very simple. All we're going to do now is apply a Gaussian Blur filter. So we're going to go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and if I just, let's see, if we go there so we can see some contrast. Um, you can see here the kind of difference in blur that we've got. If I turn it down a little bit, you'll notice, or turn it down completely, you'll notice that the preview is exactly the same sharpness. But if we turn it up, we get that blur effect. So I'll start off with a 4, see how that works out. Let's see what we've got. That hasn't made a great deal of difference to be honest so I'm going to undo that and redo it but with a much greater uh, blur radius so this time my blur radius is going to go up to say 12 let's see what we've got there so once we get to the bottom there okay so we've got a bit more of a blur to make that stand out. If I just press Control Shift and A, that will get rid of the selection, and you can see that the blur has kind of just makes this foreground image, the subject of me, um, stand out a little bit more. <coughs> if I just uh, Control Z to get my selection back, um, you can also, if you want to repeat the same function, you can go to Filters, and there's this button here, Repeat Gaussian Blur, and it will re filter the image with the settings that you had previously so it'll basically double what you've just done um, and the control key for that is control F uh, sorry the shortcut key for that is control F so if I just show you that in action if I just press simply control and F it applies exactly the same effect again and should just make it even blurrier um, so once I get rid of the selection um, you can see that I've made the subject stand out from the background very simply just by selecting the area I wanted to blur and pressing blur and it's as simple as that but in reality the best way to achieve this effect is to use a decent camera and learn how to use it um, but if you've got a rubbish camera like me then GIMP will always come to the rescue anyway I hope that answers the uh, question for the person that asked me to provide this tutorial and I hope you have fun with the effect <laughs>